Hi, it's Micare with More Prana Gardens. I'm in North Texas in zone 8A. It's October 14th and we had three and a half inches of rain last night. So everything is watered. Today I want to show you around my Golden Delicious Tree Guild and we're going to talk about some of the permaculture aspects of it and how I chose which plants that go in and how I've decided what it's going to do next. First though, I am new to YouTube and I am asking you to please, please, please do the YouTube button dance. Go down there, click some buttons. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, so. This is our sad little golden delicious tree. It came to us as a bare root from Stark Brothers in March, I believe. We had a really, 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 really bad freeze for North Texas in February, right around um, Valentine's Day. And uh, I'm glad we didn't have this tree before that. I'm not sure it would have survived. But it's had some um, little grasshopper friends. Ah. Where are you? Oh, I'm standing in ants. Sorry about that. There he is. Yep. So those have been harassing my tree. Ow, 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 ants. Okay. <laughs> so the way that we're gonna support this tree going forward is for one, all the things that are growing around it. But I'm gonna take you way down here and I'm gonna flip the camera for you. There we go. All right, way down, you can see it's graft. So it has a rootstock that has good traits that we want to promote in it, but then it's a semi-dwarf tree. So from here up, it's one kind of apple tree, and from here down, I don't know what that is. Golden delicious semi-dwarf from here up. If I let this get covered by soil, it's going to start trying to grow whatever kind of tree it was for the rootstock. We don't want that. We only want this tree to get 12 to 15 feet tall. So soon I will be taking out these bricks. Um, part of this anthill is just because it rained so much last night. It was not near that big before. And I'm going to come out and sprinkle DE on it later. That's diatomaceous earth. Um, we can get into that another time, but for now, diatomaceous earth. Alrighty. So when I take these bricks out, I'm going to plant some garlic and I'm going to put them around the tree. At, oops, sorry about that. Let's see. I'm going to put them around the tree at its drip line. So get all that out of your way. So where the leaves stop, if you go straight down, that's its drip line. So that's going to be about at the brick on this side. And a little inside it on that side. I will also be... <clears throat> um, mulching down there. With some comfrey and some other things. And I'm going to put a chicken wire cage around this tree so that nothing gets into the root zone as I plant around it. All right, so normally in a food forest, you have overstory trees, and that's the top of your system. Well, see those over there? They aren't far. So those are going to be my overstory. So this can be my understory, which is the second layer in a food forest or a guild. Okay? So guilds and forests have layers, like ogres and onions. So we work from the top down all the way to the things that grow inside the ground. This guild is currently missing layers. It will always be missing that overstory because we just use those trees for that. And there's some other things and I'll come to that. All right, so next let's look at the Roselle. We have two of them over here. And they are beautiful. So everything in a guild or in a food forest 
has to have a purpose. It has to serve the guild or the people or the plants, I mean, or the animals that use the guild. So beauty is most definitely a function and an input. So these are partially here for beauty because those flowers, I mean, come on, look at this. You see that veining on the back? They're so pretty. But also, these plants have a really deep taproot. And deep taproots help when it rains, like it did last night. That root is going to help funnel water down into the earth. And we have other deep taproot plants in the system. So that's another function. Beauty. Deep taproot. And I'm going to make tea out of these pods when they're ready. These are how you make hibiscus tea. So that's on the way. Moving around, we have our, our zinnias. And you might notice that they are on the ground. These are not little tiny dwarf zinnias that make big flowers. This is a giant zinnia that was struck by a windstorm a couple of weeks ago. And it just laid down everywhere. It used to stand up and hug the tree. Some of the flowers were even higher than the tree. It was pretty unreal. It was gorgeous though. But that storm took it down and already, I'd already staked part of it and it just wasn't worth it to keep going. So now we just have all these little beautiful flowers lying on the ground and the giant purple, it knocked down the queen lime blush with it but they're both still kicking and I don't see a reason to take them out. So these are in the, I would call them herb or shrub layer. And these are pollinator attractors. That's their purpose. They bring pollinators in here. It's when it's not misting and cloudy and all that. These are covered, covered in butterflies and bees all the time. All right, next let's get to Ah, look at that. The mullen, who's also been invaded by grasshoppers. Basically, grasshoppers everywhere. It's just crazy. So here's one mullen. This way, with its buddy on it. And then we have another one right here. And then there were... That's the Fuji apple tree, the one that looks like fingers sticking up, not the solid one. And it had two mullins. Underneath those mullins, it had these two mullins, which I transplanted here kind of late. And I thought they were first years because they were so tiny. And the first year, they just put out a little rosette of these fluffy, fluffy leaves. But then it shot up anyways. But it's kind of stunted. They're usually like six, seven feet tall. And it's not making many flowers or I'm not beating the grasshoppers out. In the Fuji Guild tour, and I can put a link to that at the end of this video, there's an explanation of the medical uses of mullen, but also it has a deep tap root. So it's another one of those that helps water the tree. And, um, some sources say that it's a nitrogen fixer and others don't. So I'm still looking into that. We have some okra, which I clearly need to pick. So maybe you've heard the okra story, maybe you haven't, but we have a problem. <laughs> um, I started 45 okra plants because I was really excited and wanted to grow a lot of okra. And I would plant a few and I'd come out a couple of days later and they'd be gone. Gone. And so at first I was thinking like slugs or caterpillars, but then the plants got big 
And like, I would have a plant that was like two feet tall and I'd come out and it'd be gone. That's not slugs. Well, one night we we're looking out the back door and there was this cute, teeny, little, fluffy brown bunny with the cutest little poofy white upturned tail hopping through the garden. And now I know what happens to my plants. <laughs> so, yeah. I found this one this morning. Um, so okra's been a, a challenge. I'm, I have some chicken wire cages. That's how I got this plant to actually grow is I put a chicken wire cage around it for a little while and I'm just gonna have to make more of them. And I am also planting clover outside the fence for the bunnies to try to feed them out there. And there's gonna be clover here too, but we'll get to that. Alrighty, moving on. Oh yes, and okra is a taproot a deep taproot just like the roselle and they're in the same family by the way they make the same sort of gorgeous flowers alrighty we have an eggplant it is very sad can you guess why if you guessed bunnies you're correct we got one eggplant off of that one a couple of months ago not hoping or not expecting much more from it but you know we can do this right Okay, here is the permaculture plant of all permaculture plants. This is comfrey. Now, <laughs> now y'all, clearly this is rabbit eaten comfrey, okay? I'm just, I'm not even trying to compete with them at this point. It's just the rabbits are gonna eat what they're gonna eat. I'm gonna get what's left. We're gonna move forward and do it a little different next year, but for right now, the rabbits are eating the comfrey too, okay? So, this blessed plant. First of all, get a good whiff of that. Can you smell that? Get a good... <sighs> yep, that smells like cucumbers, doesn't it? It's wonderful. Oops, go over there. All right. So, this is another deep taproot. So it's helping to water. It's also a nutrient accumulator. So that deep, deep taproot is digging way down. Oh my goodness, more ants. Is digging way down and it's pulling up nutrients into its leaves. So when I pluck off these leaves or when the rabbits eat them, all those nutrients go with the leaf. So I have two here growing around this tree and I planted another one over there, but it hasn't come up yet. And what I do as I come through and I either pluck off a couple of leaves and throw them at the base of the tree, or I can cut off the whole plant just above the ground and throw all that on there. I can also use these for compost tea. So I can soak the leaves. Sorry, I can soak the leaves in water for a couple of weeks. Um, I like to aerate the water so it's aerobic and not anaerobic. And then use that liquid to either fertilize at the base of the plants or you can do a foliar spray with them it delivers nutri nutrients to them either way so those stay around um, the trees and a couple other places in the gardens and if i had not over harvested them they would grow a lot taller and have these um, little purpley blue bell-shaped flowers on the tops of them and those are good for bees as well so Deep taproot, nutrient accumulator, fertilizer, chop and drop, animal food. Um, oh, it's medicine for people. Um, nutrient accumulator. Yeah, that has a lot of functions. We love this plant. We're gonna come back to that pepper in just a second. All right, and this pepper too. This is a Coreopsis that was growing at the top of the yard in an inconvenient place, and we know that it's going to be a giant next year. So we moved it down here, and it kind of died back, and then it came back, and then it got bunnied, and then it came back, and now it's doing this. So as this gets bigger, it's going to create flowers for pollinators, and it 
whoops, it for real. Like it's going to go way over there and way over here. And that's going to be habitat for small animals and insects as well. And then we have our Genovese and our lettuce leaf basil here that we're going to flower. These have not been for eating. These have been for pollinators. So pollinator, beauty, food if we need it, habitat for small animals. We have a little bit of oregano growing here. This is a start of a ground cover layer. There's no other ground cover here right now. And well, you could say this is ground cover because it's sheltering the ground. And the same with that one. You could say the roselle is acting as a ground cover. But as far as low growing, we just have the oregano. And it struggled a little, it's okay. It's trying to spread and I'm gonna let it do whatever it wants. It's gonna be fine. All right, let's get to those peppers. So the peppers met the same fate as the okras and the eggplants and the comfries, except they didn't survive as well. They didn't really bounce back as well. There's one here, there's a cayenne right there. There's another little pepper over there. Oh butterfly appearance. So the um, bunnies were one problem for the peppers, but also there were supply chain issues with soil um, winter through spring, right about the time that we were trying to put these in, and the peppers got bad soil. Um, nothing I can do to change that right now except for keep amending it and keep putting compost tea on it. <clears throat> I will cut the peppers down. I will cut them down, take off their leaves, and then I'm going to take straw mulch and pull it all the way around the plants. I'm going to do that with all my peppers that are in this garden. Cut them down, take off their leaves, cover them with straw mulch, and hope that they overwinter. Now, I don't know if you can see. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. Up here, in the kitchen garden, that's all peppers. So, they've done okay. The peppers have done okay up there in the kitchen garden, and they've done okay in the potted garden just not here. And so that's how I got down to it's the soil, not me. <laughs> I was kicking myself at first, but yeah, it's definitely the soil. So let me show you a little bit about how you plant into a garden when you have wood chip. There was a Moringa tree right here, but you know, bunnies. Those were bunny ears, not quotes, by the way. Um, so when you are planting into a garden that is covered in wood chip, you dig, oh, it's gonna be tough on me. There we go. You dig all the way down until you get into the ground. Look at that, nice deep roots down there. You go all the way down to the ground and you plant down there below the wood chip. And then you pull your soil around the base of your plants. And then this had just gotten filled in from like, you know, bunny activity and whatnot. All right, I'm just gonna wipe my hand on my pants real quick. All right, <laughs> moving on. See, look, 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 bunny damage. So going forward, we're gonna be putting a lot more um, perennial flowers in here. So here's a little baby bee balm. And that's going to get big and make lots of flowers for bees and pollinators. And then over here, you see there's a little echinacea here. This is the purple kind. It had a friend. Guess what happened? We're also cover cropping here. So you can see this is a little bit of hairy vetch trying to get started. Here's a little bunny chomped field pea trying to get started. 
I um, I came through and I sprinkled. Oh, here's another one. Another little field pea trying to get started right there. So knowing that we were about to get a lot of rain, I came through and I covered, um, I sprinkled cover crop. I did the fall mix from Johnny Seed. Not sponsored or anything like that. Just, you know, that's what we're doing. It has field pea, hairy vetch, crimson clover, and ryegrass. I always forget the clover when I'm thinking about that. So all of those are nitrogen fixers. All of those are gonna add nitrogen to the soil. Nitrogen helps you grow leaves. Now, if I was growing a lot of food plants down here, which I am doing some, um, I would need to put more than nitrogen, and I will over time, and the comfrey helps with a lot of that. But wood chips can eat nitrogen, they're not going to kill your plants if you plant down into the ground, but may as well add some, right? And they keep the ground covered. So the ground stays warmer or cooler and it regulates its moisture better. In the spring, when the cover crop starts to flower, I'm going to come cut it all down right at the ground and drop it back onto the soil and it will create a cover crop. It'll break down, give more nutrients. Pardon me. The air has not been kind. If you can see my allergy symptoms here showing on my face. Um, so cover crop, the peppers I'm going to leave where they are. Like I said, I'm going to cut them down and mulch them. I'm going to be planting my brassicas into this bed soon. So broccolis, cauliflowers, Brussels sprouts, um, sweet alyssum flowers are in the brassica family and they grow well in the winter. So I'm going to be putting in some of those as well. Eventually, the food production is going to move up towards the kitchen garden. Um, we just have to expand the kitchen garden a lot more before it can all fit up there. So it's kind of working its way that way, and this will become more of a perennial garden as we work through it. That can be perennial, but probably not here. It probably won't survive the winter here. Let's see. Oh! Okay, so the layers that we left out, vining layer, um, the field peas are going to take care of some of that. That's obviously things that climb. Um, we don't have a root layer here, but I am going to be planting that garlic like we talked about. And um, I'm going to put some radishes back here, I think and let those get into the ground. Um, there's a fungal layer in forests and guilds. So I put mycorrhizal fungi in all my planting holes or I dust the bottom of my transplants with it. Um, so their roots already have mycorrhizal fungi and that is spreading in the earth right now. But also I had one of those um, countertop mushroom kits the ones where you like cut the plastic and then the mushrooms grow out of the box. I did North Spore this time and it worked way better than some of the other rands that I've tried. But I had all that leftover material from it. And last night before it started raining, I came out and crumbled that and I put some here. And I put it just around different trees and in different gardens to see what it does. So that should add to the fungus layer. So let's see, overstory we talked about we don't have because of the big trees. We have the understory here with the uh, apple tree that will one day be big. Um, herb and shrub layers kind of blend together a bit. And those are, you know, the big shrubby plants and the herbs. And then ground cover we talked about. Um, I had strawberries in here, but they did not like the earth. So instead of trying them again, what I'm actually doing is my friend Winter had some pine berries delivered here, some pine berry um, bare root plants, and I'm overwintering them for him. And Winter, one of them has made it. I'm going to be buying more plants in the spring to add to the collection because I want you to make jam 
and I want some of it. <laughs> but we're gonna do pine berries down here instead of strawberries. So they're pretty much the same. They're supposed to have, um, I think a pineapple-y flavor. I don't know. I'm excited to try them. They're not ready yet. But we're gonna do those. Like I said, the oregano is gonna spread. Um, I'm gonna put some thyme down here. There's more ants on my toe. Um, I'm gonna try to get some thyme going in the cool months, but not in the freezes and not in the summer. We can do nasturtiums in here and I have some ready to move in. And then, so going down root layer, we talked about that, vining layer. Oh, and there's not gonna be a water layer. There's not gonna be a pond layer. There's a lake right there. And we're thinking about putting a pond in the garden, in the yard over there. So there's not a water layer in this one. And I think that's, is that everything? Could that be everything? Did we do it? I think we did. I think we finished the whole garden and what we're gonna do with it and everything. So keep checking back if you'd like to see it grow. If you have any questions about any of that permaculture stuff, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Please, please. I am happy to interact. I'm happy to answer questions. If I don't know the answer, I'm happy to go find them. <coughs> Pardon me. Alrighty, thank y'all for joining me. I'm gonna put the other apple tree tour right there for you, and then there'll be another video down here to pick from. And until then, I hope you have a good day. Later, y'all.